I'm Tony Jones. Here's a bonus question we couldn't fit on Q&A because we just ran such a long time, but not enough time for this one. It's from Andrea Park. Oh, here you go. Uh, well, my granddaughter started university this year and I was very disappointed to see a lot of the um, extreme hazing um, actions that went on in the university. And I sort of feel that um, although I think it's a good thing to have good... Um, healthy bonding sessions, when it gets to the point of people being humiliated and treated really badly, I think that there should be much stronger discipline, um, maybe towards the students themselves, and a lot, a lot more action taken by the authorities there than what there is. I think it's been very poor and it's been going on for a long time and nobody seems to be doing a great deal about it. And I just wonder what the panel thinks about it. Tanya Plibersek. When I was at university 30 years ago, the same things were happening and the same excuses were being made. Enough is enough. We have to stop it. The, the universities have to take action uh, um, against the colleges that are continuing these um, behaviours. The, some of the colleges are governed under state legislation and they, they claim to be quite independent of the universities. Well, I'm happy to work with state governments if we're elected to actually change the laws to make college, colleges more responsive and more responsible for the safety of their students. Uh, I think nothing should be off the table to and stop this And just so behavior. people know what we're talking about, what sort of things are you referring to? What, well, what steps over the line? Uh, well, the hazing that you've described, but sexual assault on a, on a horrific scale. Uh, I, I read one report during the week that said over the last five years there was something under 600 uh, sexual misconduct um, uh, reports, about a quarter of them were actual rape. Guess how many people got expelled for that? Six in that time. So the universities have to take stronger action, particularly uh, against sexual harassment, sexual assault, uh, physical violence. We've heard, you know, a young one, one young woman was hospitalised for being made to drink a cocktail that included shampoo as well as alcohol. Uh, uh, um, look, it, it is just not on. And these students, are, they're, they're residents of the colleges, but they're students of the universities. It's not OK for the universities to, to say the colleges are independent. Right. The uh, colleges... Sorry, I've got to go around yeah, the rest of the sure. panel. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll hear from all the women first. So, Shari. Um, I was editor of Clio magazine back in 2013, and one of the first stories that I oversaw was, um, it, like, a proper investigation at hazing and other O-Week ceremonies at uh, Sydney University and the colleges within them. And as part of that story, it was seven pages in the magazine, as part of it, um, we interviewed this one girl who was actually an intern at the time in the magazine and she, we put a wig on her and photographed her from behind so her identity would be protected, but she told about the really, truly horrific things that were happening at her particular college, including sexual assault. It was just awful and she was 19 years old. And after um, the magazine came out, the university, not the university, the college went on a witch hunt to find her identity. And she had told a friend who told a friend. And so eventually they worked out it was her. And she was brought in and she got in trouble. So there was no proper uh, investigation into the, the boys at the nearby colleges who were doing these awful things. She was the one who got in trouble for raising this problem. It is truly horrific. It is, it is an unsafe environment. Uh, and, and I think that the things that Tanya Plibersek suggested this week, she said all options were on the table, including withdrawing funding. Um, if, if this wasn't sorted out, it is really good and it's about time. And, and, I, and I hope that Thanks, you know, those things are implemented. Kamala, does it surprise you to hear that these sort of things are still going on? It sounds almost like uh, another era, but in fact, the same sort of hazing is happening in, in the United States. I don't know if it's happening in Britain. Well, I don't know, but I was at university in America where, you know, we had a fraternity culture where I was and this kind of thing was going on. Look, with sexual assault, that's a crime. Mm. You know, so that's very straightforward that, of course, it sh you know, it shouldn't be happening. All steps should be taken against it. There should be prosecutions. Where it gets more problematic is where there's behaviour that is disgusting or disgraceful, but not criminal. Um, and what do you do around there? I think that's the much thornier issue. Mm. Um, and I suspect the, prob the you need to sort of step back and look at the wider culture. 
um, that people are going into, because it's not that they turn 18, step into university and become these people. Um, so what is going on that is making this kind of behavior something that is so appealing? Um, and is there something that can be done at different levels? Angus. Well, sexual assault and sexual harassment is unacceptable behaviour. There's no doubt about that, and it should be dealt with as absolutely unacceptable behaviour. But I think it's really important to, to get the facts. And uh, Liz Broderick did a report of the Sydney University Residential Colleges last year. It's a very good report. One of the things it showed very clearly is that the, the rate of harassment, none of which is acceptable, is significantly below the university at large on a per capita basis and significantly below the community at large. And so it's very important with an issue like this to target the bad behaviour, target the individuals responsible for that behaviour, but don't demonise the institutions because that's what some of the activists really want to do here. They have, they have ulterior motives. Now, none of this behaviour is acceptable and it should be targeted, it should be stopped. But to, to use it as a way of targeting the institutions, which I fear is what Tanya was saying, is, uh, I think, the wrong step to... Is that what you were uh, saying very briefly? Well, I don't know what you mean by that. I, 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 um, I read, uh, I think, in Liz's well, you report... Want to take, you, you want to take away their enabling legislation, Tanya? I, I want them to be accountable for the safety the, the of their residents. The individuals well, need to be accountable Well, this is someone who behaviour. was the head student at one of the colleges speaking. Well, well Tony went to one of the colleges as well, actually. So. And, 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 everything you, and you were comfortable you with know. everything <laughs> you... And you were comfortable with everything you saw there, were you? No, Tanya, I am uncomfortable with lots of things I see, including in the parliament, of course. Uh, and, and what I say in those cases is target the individual and the behaviour that is where yeah. that is Colleges where we solve the problem. have been saying that for 30 years since I was at, at university, and nothing much has changed. Well, okay, I, Richard, I don't think no, any no, more well, well, young people. Read Liz Rogers' report. We've, we've got a time limit on this, so I Richard, have, you need actually. to uh, respond. Go ahead. Um, I, I think I'd probably back up a lot of what's been said. Uh, I think some of the activity is clearly illegal, and it should be prosecuted, and evidence should be collected. Sexual assault's a crime and people should be subject to criminal penalties for committing crimes. Um, I think uh, what we heard from Carmela is, is absolutely right. You, you then get into this area about behaviour that's completely unacceptable but doesn't fall into the category of, of criminal behaviour. And that's where you do need to have strong leadership from within the institutions to ensure that everybody's held accountable for that. Um, I know in the Defence Force, when they encountered this issue, they conducted a thorough, comprehensive review. I, I do get a little worried that um, some people are making excuses for this and they are defending this as isolated behaviour. Um, the fact that students come from high school into these colleges and aren't uh, allowed to feel safe and secure is a problem. And uh, unless we acknowledge it and deal with it, and, and that does mean if we do need additional legislation, it's something we should, should consider, or at the very least, we need to have some certainty that the processes that are put in place by the institutions themselves are thorough enough okay. to make sure it doesn't happen again. All right, now, you'll be able to watch this online, but we'll end it there. Thanks for your question, Andrea.